Okay. Uh, we are looking at some files from David Allison, and um, let's take a look at the original source files here. This is an HDR treatment, meaning um, he's taken three different exposures, different varying brightnesses, and he's going to combine them into one image. And the idea with that is we're going to get one image that has a dark enough sky and mountain range, and another image that has brighter landscape bottom half and combine those together to make one image that has the best of both worlds hopefully now um, let's just talk about the original images real quick these are two stops apart which is kind of a lot for this type of landscape because there's not a radical difference um, that you would need two stop difference and you might take some that are sort of out of range. So you want to be clo a little bit closer together, in my opinion, for this. Uh, this one has almost all the information we need. It's just a little overexposed on top. This one is fine, actually, for the sky. So if it were me, I'm, I'm just going to use these two images because this one is so dark that we almost really don't need the information in it. It's not benefiting us that much as the mountains are realistic here and they can be darkened down slightly to be right in the in the range even just with a quarter stop decrease so um, the other thing I noticed about is there's a sensor dust and it's shot at f22 so I would probably not shoot this lens at f22 it doesn't seem to perform very well at f22 and that is the case with a lot of lenses they have diffraction and other issues when you stop all the way down to 22 so try 16 or 11 you'll still get plenty of depth when you're at 26 millimeters um, and you'll probably get a, a little more sharpness out of the box also make sure your tripod is really really stable all right so that's my spiel on the source images take them one stop apart instead of two um, try f16 or f11 and make sure you're really sturdy with your tripod all right so a uh, couple different ways to combine these images. We can either open them all and layer them in Photoshop and then erase you know, the top image, expose the bottom image and stuff like that. Or we can use automation to combine the images. And I have Aurora HDR here. This is made by Skyloom. And um, you can just open the images in there. I'll open all three just because that's what David did. So I want to follow kind of his process. Um, and I'll just click create HDR and you can see this is minus two stops minus four stops and um, we're just gonna get an out-of-the-box simple HDR and then we can apply filters and presets and other manipulations to get um, sort of a final look out of it if you want to use Skyloom software you can use code LPC 10 on Skyloom to get your copy you'll get 10% off um, it is a pretty cool HDR software if you're into HDR. Um, works nicely for architectural shots and uh, landscapes. Doesn't work so well when things are moving around because you want to be able to layer your files without having uh, anything move. So you can see right right now we've got a pretty flat looking file, but it's but it's decent and it it combined the files pretty well for us. And if we zoom in. Um, I've got this file open in Photoshop too, but if we zoom in on it, um, I've compared it to the source files and it hasn't really lost anything. It's Everything lines up pretty well, everything's pretty sharp, and so I'm not going to do any um, any additional like manual combining of these images. And if So the automation worked pretty well there. And if we want to look at um, the source again just to see what it's combined we can open the source and just by looking at the background here you can tell it's it's taken a darker sky you can see it's darkened the sky significantly and it's also brightened up the land significantly so it's done a pretty good job of combining exposures David's is a little bit radical for me this is David's version and um, it's got a couple problems I at first I said I might like the cow but I changed my mind because the cow is he's blurry on the face because he moved probably so when these images were combined probably the cow um, the cow got blurred his face got obscured and then um, a couple other things I don't like about it. it looks a little over sharpened it's just really too sharp 
in the foreground and the tips of the trees and some of the other stuff is not right. There's a little haloing in here on this tree and some of the tips, tree tips and things are a little bit too dark. And um, for me, it's just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go back to um, this more subdued version and um, I just manipulate from here. So I'm closing the raw file. This is my HDR version. And then I'm just going to work, first I'm going to work on the basics. So I'm going to um, do some retouching. The first thing I would do is just remove this sensor dust. By the way, this, this will show up more um, when you are at um, F22. So F16, F11, you might not have as much sensor dust. Just check in the sky, make sure there's no other sensor dust. Oh, there's one here too. I'll get that. And then... Um, the cow, as I said, I changed my mind about the cow. I don't like it so much now, so I'm going to get rid of him. So what I'm going to do there is uh, I'm just going to lasso him because he's a cow after all. And then I'm going to do a content aware fill. This is probably not going to be perfect, but just for the sake of demonstration, it'll probably be fine. It's not perfect. There's some problems in here um, that I could work on. I could work on these with the clone stamp or whatever. Um, but I'm not really worried about perfection. I just want to show you my process. Uh, I'm going to turn up the opacity there. I can clone some of these little problems I created. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not trying to be too perfect right now, but you can definitely clone a cow. Just make sure you use the lasso because it's a cow. It's the appropriate tool. Soften this up a little bit. And just kind of take that out. He's got a version without the cow, so he would just use the version without the cow. I do like what he did with the warmth. The color temperature is warmer, so I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and do a color balance thing, and then I'm going to go toward yellow a little. And then uh, you got to look at the levels. You should always look at the curves or the levels and see. I'm just going to add some contrast. And then I could darken the sky a little further even. So for that, I'm just going to do a curves, grab this, pull it down a little bit, and mask over this layer. And then I'm going to brush it back in where I want it. So just with a low opacity brush, I'll just darken the top of the sky a little bit and mountaintops. So that's just a little bit. And I want to be careful not to get this tree all weird. And now I'm, I'm similar, but I'm, it's not as sharpened. And we're looking at a larger file too, so um, as the file gets downsized, um, it'll look sharper as well. So you kind of factor that in. When you do export your final JPEG, it's going to automatically look sharper in a web in a web size. So I'm not going to go crazy with sharpening here. But if I merge these up and go filter sharpen, unsharp mask, I can add some sharpening now. Just enough. This is 100, two, radius of 2, and threshold of 1. That'll sharpen up my grass quite a bit. Now it's looking quite a bit sharper already. And then I just ask myself where I want light and stuff like that. So if I want to brighten anything or darken anything. I'm going to go to more of a crop like David's crop. So I'm going to go to a 16 by 9 crop and check. That's about where he's cropped. Um, I'll even go a little more sky and a little less land, kind of like he did here. That's a pretty similar crop. And because um, I don't need this information down here too badly. And I want to be kind of similar to his. And then I can, uh, I can do some additional manipulations. So I'll do another curves here. This one I'm going to do ge general brightening. So I'm going to crank this up, mask over it and brighten only where I want to brighten. So for me, I want to brighten a little bit in the center of the image to and in the back here. If you brighten in the back, it kind of gives the image a little more depth. It gives it a three-dimensional quality. And then I want to darken in the foreground. The foreground's too bright. So I'm going to do another curves, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this down. And then I'm going to mask that. And again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull in the darkness where I want it by masking it back in. So I'm just gonna darken there, make it look a little more natural. 
Can I darken the corners just a little? I know this looks weird, but I'm going to dial down the opacity here too, just to make it more subtle. It's a subtle little vignette on the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to do another saturation layer. Plus 10. It's not looking too crazy, but it's a little bit over the top. I'm going to come down a little. All right, and then I'm going to view them kind of at the same size. Make them fill the screen. This one's still considerably sharper, so I'm going to go merge up one more time, and I'm going to actually sharpen again just to be closer. Actually, what I'm going to do for this web example is I'm going to go, this is 2048 wide, so I'm going to make mine 2048 wide. Image size, 2048. Make sure we're looking at the same thing. 72 PPI, 2048 downsize. I just want to look at the same size of image, so I'm kind of getting the right information. His is way more contrasty. If you like that, you can do it. For me, this is more realistic. It's an HDR. This is an HDR. But you wouldn't really notice that it's an HDR so much. You definitely know it here. Um, there's some artifacts. If you look in here, too, there's some artifacts over the mountains, some color bands. So try to avoid stuff like that. This might not be HDR enough for some people. For me, it's enough. I mean, you you got to, some of it's very subjective, but start with less. Less is more. Get yourself a snack. Come back to it the next day and look at it again. Keep a working file like this open so you can roll back all your changes. I can roll back all my changes just by going to my background layer so I can see it before and after. And then um, don't, don't uh, publish or share your first version. Make some versions. And um, I'll go ahead and post this up with my comments, but um, I think this is a good starting point. Just be a little more subtle. Try Aurora HDR. I think you're going to like the software Skyloom uh, LPC 10. Uh, thanks for watching.